All right, praise the Lord, we're back here. I um, just wanted to get my uh, tablet up and running and go through some of the scripture on this. So, from Jude 1, the Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God, the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Verse 1 is saying, set apart and kept for the return of Christ. Verse 2, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Common salvation, all for one, joined together, unity. That's what they're talking about in these scriptures. Definite unchanging an unchangeable content giving common salvation for the faith remember this is about faith in jesus christ and what we believe in god amen amen salvation means to protect to rescue to make whole that's why some of us still battle in sin because we're not whole yet guys god has delivered us god has made us a child of god Amen. He's, he's given us the ability to see Him and to come out of our sins on our own. But that doesn't mean we, we will we'll be fully clean. God will not make us whole until the salvation is complete. Salvation is complete when we make it to heaven. When we make it through that, through that eternal, the gates of heaven. Amen. But God equals Christ equals God. Amen. God equals Christ equals God. Continuing on to verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained of this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our, our God into lavish lavishness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4 is talking about certain men. Humans of old. Amen. And I actually believe this scripture is talking about the angels. And I'm going to be able to point that out to you here in just a minute. Using, they were using grace to be greedy. They were using grace to keep, to, to have more than one partner. They were using grace to lust after, after sexual desires and have multiple partners and have multiple extramarital affairs. Also, they were denying Christ. Remember, that's very important, which means they didn't have faith. They didn't have faith that God could give them what they wanted in their life, amen. So they just lusted after everything because they couldn't have what they wanted, amen. Verse 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Now remember, this is a scripture somebody gave me to combat homosexuality. We have not discussed, we're, we're in, the, in the five verses now, and we have not once talked about Sodom and Gomorrah and homosexuality yet. But let's go on here, because now it's talking about Egypt. It's talking about delivering the people out of Egypt. So why did God deliver the people out of Egypt? Well, God delivered because he wanted to defeat the devil. He wanted to glorify himself. And he wanted to increase their faith. That's what it was all about. Just like prayer and fasting. Amen. That's what it's all about. It's about removing that unbelief. That's what God was removing when he destroyed Egypt. He was removing the unbelievers in faith. Of faith. They didn't have faith. That's what he's talking about in these verses. Verse 6. And the angels which crept which kept not their first estate. Remember me talking earlier about the, the certain men this of old? They, these were old men. They were marked long ago for condemnation. Okay? Amen. And there's other scriptures I can get into where it talks about angels even sleeping with God, uh, fleshly people. It goes back into Genesis even. But these are things you have to study on your own. I can't give you the whole Bible in one video series when you want to call somebody out for, for homosexuality that you have been taught your whole life is a sin. Trust me, I was too. And I battled it for, for this whole time. But I, but I also knew that it wasn't totally who I was. But walking with Jacob taught me that that's who he was. And how could this man love God, but the only thing wrong with him be that he loves a man 
and that's going to put him in the pits of hell. So it made me study more. It made me pray to God more. It made me want God to show me and reveal things to me. Amen. And he did. And he showed me that it wasn't, these weren't the people that were the problem. It was the people that were trying to kill them, even with Sodom and Gomorrah, which I'm going to get into that scripture when I talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. But right now I want to talk to you about these scriptures and why they're not telling you about, about homosexuality or the LGBT commu community. They're telling you about unbelievers in God, people that were, were greedy and, and Amen. So we're, let's continue on. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, left their own proper domain, dom, dom, domain. He hath reserved into everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Did you hear that, guys? You know, God delivered, let, let me say this too, on the God delivering the people out of Egypt. His people were miserable. In Exodus 3, 7, and, and trust me, Jacob, Jacob coming into the church with me, you know, I grew up and it was easy for me to walk through there and, and knowing God wanted me there for a reason and a purpose. And I knew there was a bigger purpose. I knew what my walk was. Amen. But he, he just kind of walked blindly with God and me, but it was, his people were miserable. Exodus 3, 7. If you want confirmation of that, God's people were miserable that's why he delivered them even though they were miserable in their sins probably he delivered them because you know why because they still had faith they may have been sleeping with the same sex they may have been cussing up a storm they may have been marking their body with uh, uh, ink and or mud and, and paste who knows back then but whatever it was they had faith in God that when he came and he came for them and he delivered them he was gonna make them whole amen he had Moses lead them out of the bondage to the promised land. He did not into more bondage. He didn't, he didn't put the same restraints on them, guys. What would be the purpose of that? No more bondage or man-made laws. That's what he's telling you. And we're going to talk about that in a second because he actually has a conversation with Satan about the law of Moses. You guys all think it's about the body of Moses. But the meaning of the scripture is about the law of Moses. Amen. Egypt. So what about Egypt? What about Egypt? Verse verse 6, And the angels crept in, not aware of the great day. So so that was about him. Egypt. Remember what I said too about why he destroyed Egypt. It was He didn't destroy Egypt because of... So then we go on and it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. Now remember, this is why I wanted to bring up Egypt. He, deli he, he destroyed Egypt because they didn't believe in God. Amen. The same thing happened in Sodom and Gomorrah and, and many other cities too. They, they always want to throw Sodom and Gomorrah the names up. But there was other cities destroyed during that time. And they were unbelief. Now, like I said, I'm going to get into the story of Sodom and Gomorrah when I get into that video about Sodom and Gomorrah in those chapters. And I can focus more on just Sodom and Gomorrah. So you have to just, just kind of trust in God for right now and for this moment. But... They were. They just told you in the in the word of God. Don't you don't have to believe me, even as Sodom and Gomorrah. They're referring to Egypt up here, guys. Egypt. So why did he destroy Egypt? Because of their unbelief. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah. So right there, that confirms what I'm gonna what I'm gonna prove in the other video anyway. And the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over. Now, now remember, he's already going to destroy them. So now they're turning. They, they know what's coming. Amen. Sodom and Gomorrah, the men were going to kill them angels that were with Lot. Okay, I'll, that's a brief summary of the video. Them angels were going to go gay rape. Amen. For all the men of God that doesn't like homosexuality. Them men of God were going to go butt bang these guys to death. That was going to be their goal, was to butt bang them to death, amen? And, and what in the world? That, that's that's the, the people in our suits, in our churches? That's, that, that's not, that, no, 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 no. That's not, the, but that's what they're doing because you know what? Let a gay man walk into a church, especially an apostolic or a Pentecostal church. Man, they'll spit them up and chew them out so fast and let them know they're not welcome there. I've seen it time and time again. Yes, if you begin to change in the first service or two, they'll welcome you back every time. But if you don't begin to submit in an instant to them, not to the Word of God, to them, because God didn't put a time on you. He didn't put a timer on your salvation. I mean, he, don't get me wrong. He's going to come someday, and then it's too late. So there is a timer on it. But God is calling you on your time. 
Don't let them tell you what your time is. Amen. So, but even in Sodom and Gomorrah, so, so, they, so they go out to fornication. So let's talk about fornication. Fornication doesn't sound like they said homosexuality to me. Fornication, if you look up the word, and you, and you can do this with, if you have a Strong's too, which is awesome. But um, it says to unchast. That, that's the Greek Hebrew meaning, meaning, if you can see that there. Unchast means, if you, if you look up the definition, it means illicit. It actually even says it here, to go a whoring. Like, I, lo I love that phrase, to go a whoring, you know. Um, la, 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 I'm just going a whoring, you know. So, I mean, that's what they're talking about there. They're, and extramarital. They're not, uh, extramarital affairs they're talking about. Um, I, I, I see nowhere in there about homosexuality. Again, guys, I'm not saying... I'm not telling you. Maybe, maybe later we'll we'll find it, and, and I'll I'll change my 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 opinion here. But this scripture that you guys are giving me does not confirm that homosexuality is a sin. Um, even we haven't heard one thing about two dudes loving each other, and we're and we're you know almost halfway through the chapter. So, so Sodom and Egypt. Let's let's. Why am I comparing the two? Well, let's go to Revelation 11:8 because I don't want you know, and I've given you some cross reference scriptures already. But Revelation 11, 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, will also our Lord was crucified. You guys, when does this happen? This happens after they finish their testimony. Amen. And uh, I know, I know my big battle began after I finished a massive testimony. Amen. Um, of where God had put me and how he changed my life and things like that. Um, and yeah, let me tell you something the, the beast is going to make war against you. He is going to come after you. He is going, this is not your world. Remember that. So it is what it is. He maybe he is going to overcome you and kill you. It says it shall. That's a promise. Amen. But your dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Why is it called Sodom and Egypt? Because God destroyed them cities for unbelief. But the two people they just killed... For, for preaching the truth, the two people they just killed, right there, the, the two people they just killed, amen. but I know we, we're we not going to not believe, amen, so we're going to be okay, and three days later, their, their bodies rise, guys, and they continue to do what they were doing before they were killed. Amen. This is the word of God, and it is living each and every day. The angels, the men of old, crept in unaware. I talked about earlier in verse 6. They kept not their first estate, their proper domain. They left their dwelling place. You can find those scriptures in Genesis 1, or excuse me, Genesis 6, 1 through 4. These angels are locked in chains, everlasting until darkness. Chains until judgment. 2 Peter 2, 4 can confirm that. Along with this, do a study on this. Don't question, you know, we need to start w giving our witness, though. I don't know why we keep worrying and why we have to debate what sin is and what sin isn't in people's lives. We need to let people work out their own salvation. This is not talking about the angels when it talks about, you know, uh, or I'm sorry, this is talking about the angels. It, it goes back to, let me go back to Jude. When it talks about strange flesh, it's talking about the angels. This is talking about the angels, not even us. Um, I believe that's in verse 8. Um, also these, also these uh, light, or I'm sorry, it's in verse 7. And going after strange flesh are set forth for an example. That's, they're, they're talking about them angels, them demons and evil spirits, men of old that cannot let go of what God and Jesus Christ came and changed. Amen. They're still holding on to the chains. They're still holding on to the bondage. And you walk in their church and they put it right on your wrist. Amen. They put the they put the marking right in your hand. Amen. Don't let them do that to you. Uh, they're they're talking about this situation. They're talking about unbelievers, and and then we go there and we we want to believe because that's the place we're supposed to believe, right? No, this is the place we're supposed to believe. The word of God is what we're supposed to believe. Jeez. Not even us. And and here we are now. And and. We're not even talking about some gay dude yet, guys. 
So verse 8, we're talking about filthy dreamers. They're talking about lusting after others, not yours, lusting after a married woman or a married guy, a, a married transgender. I don't, I don't care what, what you do with your, your body parts. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you what the Bible is telling me, what the Bible is telling you, what the Word of God has been telling people for generation after generation. To defile, to do, to alter your body. Because so it says filthy dreamers defile their body. So it means they're lusting after so much that they start to alter, alter their body and things like that. So you do have to be careful. Here, here's the thing, guys. If you are in your mind, you know you are a female, and you know in your mind you are a female, and you choose to put a penis on, you know you've done something wrong. But this is what I believe, and then you can take this away from the, from the Word of God for a second. I'll step back even. I believe that if you're in your heart and your mind and your soul believe that you are a female and you and you and you are a male and you add a penis to your female body, that's between you and God. I'm not going to judge you. Do I think it's right or wrong? I don't know. I, I as soon as I I know the, the 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 Bible, I haven't found anything that scripturally speaks against it yet. Uh, the, defiling your body is is to alter your body. Your flesh, um, you you make a tail on your body. You 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 dye your skin color. You're white, but you dye it black. You're black, but you dye it white. Um, you know those are the things, and I'm not even going to judge those things because I don't like to judge sin. I, I unless it's a clear answer, definite in the Bible, like this is in Jude that this is not about homosexuality. But dominion, do, do you hate this world? Um, I, if you don't, then you're not a believer in Jesus Christ. I hate to tell you. Because if, if you hate the Antichrist coming, then you're not a believer in God. You're not, a, you're not a believer in the Word of God because you should be in joy because He's coming. You should be in joy that they're going to build the temple in Israel for the third time. And that's the last thing left, the prophetic thing of the Bible that's left to bring in the end times. You should be happy. You should be filled with joy because right behind all that is the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you hate this world, that means you're an evil person. But you're calling out and worried about homosexuality or the LGBT community, what they're doing with their body, or, or you call out abortion. But but wait a minute, you call out abortion, so you call out Nancy Pelosi because she stands for abortion. But yet in the same, and I'm and I'm all for you guys. Don't get me wrong, I totally agree with not killing any babies. I'm totally against abortion. I don't think anybody should kill any babies. But I'm not here to judge anybody. That's that's who I am. That's what I believe. But here's the thing. But the, the Bible says in the very next line in that, that scriptures, you speak evil of dignities. So how many of you talk about our representatives, whether they be Republican, Trump, Donald Trump, Biden, or, or, or you know, uh, Democrat? You know, either you talk, but you talk negatively about them. So you're actually speaking evil of dignities. Um you know, or or you or you maybe you know make fun of Moses, you know, because he couldn't talk, or or you know he talked to a burning bush, whatever, you know. But this is you speaking evil of dignities. So where does your sin begin and mine start? Um, I'm not sure either. Um, but he wanted to destroy Sodom, Gomorrah, Egypt, or any other city because of gay people. That that's not no. He was doing it again and again because. The so-called righteous men, the so-called righteous men of God, were making their own laws above what God had given Moses. But even in Scripture in Jude, God talked about that. Um, let's see. Am I there yet? Let's jump down here. Verse 9, yet Michael the archangel, we're talking about Jesus here, guys. We're talking about God, amen, when contending with the devil. So they're discussing the body of Moses. This is actually, ta if you get into this and you study this, this is actually speaking about the law of Moses, okay? And he dared not bring a, re a reviling accusation against the law of Moses, but the Lord rebuked thee. He rebuked Satan, and he took Moses, amen, and he took his soul and he took it where it was supposed to be. And he took it into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I believe that in that scripture. And you can dive into it more. Like I said, I can't do a full study of every word. We'll be here, we'd be here for days. And uh, I would have broke down the whole Bible for you. So, but you have to see what's there. Um, 
verse 7 talks about sexual immortality. Um, the, the fate of these, those the same as Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember that sexual immortality, though, guys, is not homosexuality. Do not let them lie to you, Greek, Hebrew, unchast. Amen. So just remember what, what I said. Unchast, it's illicit, which means to go a whoring or extramarital. Amen. So are you cheating on your spouse? Amen. I'm not even talking about what you guys agree on. You know what? Were you, were you having your relationship with God? You're, you became one flesh with God. Remember that. Amen. So so let's go back to, to uh, the fate of those. Uh, verse 8, they reject authority. I just talked about verse 9. Talking in reference to the soul of Moses, we just talked about that. Verse 10, 2 Peter 2.12 is the cross-reference for this. Uh, those people that stay unbelievers um, are going to demise in their own corruption, amen, in their own fear. Um, verse 11, uh, following those against God, be careful about that. Beware of wolves and sheep closing. Verse 12, um, verse 13, beware of false prophets again. Verse 14, the judgment. Uh, verse 15 in Jude um, talks about the sins come to light. Um, verse 16, beware of arrogance. Verse 17, the Old Testament um, is what this scripture is talking about. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. The law is not dead, guys. But remember the law of Moses was thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal. This was not, this was not thou shalt not cut off your penis, thou shalt not add a penis on your vagina. You know, these are the things that we need to be careful what we're adding to the word of God. Um, we're, we're changing the freedom that God gave us when he, when he died on that cross. Amen. And, uh, uh, but verse 17, uh, also, you know, it, it's the fate of non-believers. Um, you know, we cannot forget the old Testament, but we cannot forget the prophecy of the new, um, and the, and the coming of Jesus Christ. Verse 19, uh, you, it, you become reprobate or lack of spirit. You can find verses, cross-references in Romans 8, 9, and John 3, 5. Uh, I just want to say that, you know, these scriptures did not confirm, um, and they, they, they actually, the scripture they gave me was Jude 1, 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Strange flesh means... You know, strange flesh means exactly what it says. I, I believe it goes back to the angels and, and the men of old. Um, but I, I believe it's are set forth for an example of suffering the vengeance. Going after strange flesh. Amen. You're going after something that you don't desire. Something that is not for you. Amen. Love comes from the heart. Love comes from the heart. And I believe that if you're going against who you truly are, you're going after strange flesh. Uh, but these scriptures do not mention the word homosexuality, and so they cannot be used in that reference. Um, again, I have more scriptures that I've been given to study, um, and I'm going to do the same thing with each one and break each scripture down. And I will use the whole word of God, though, to determine whether that scripture is telling me that the lifestyle is a sin. So far, we haven't discovered that it is. God bless you and have a great evening. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus.